What's up everybody, Investing Club here. In this video, I want to show you a stock I've been looking at related to the oil and gas industry. I think this stock is one of the safest and best value stocks to be found related to the oil and gas industry. And if you are looking at investing in oil or gas stocks after oil prices have crashed, then I think this is a company you should definitely take a look at. And the company I am talking about is Texas Pacific Land Trust. Their ticker symbol is TPL. This is their investor presentation. You can find it on their investor relations page. And just for a little background information on this company, they are, I believe, the second oldest company on the New York Stock Exchange. They were created in 1888 after the bankruptcy of Texas and Pacific Railway. So this is a company that's been around for literally hundreds of years, something you can't say for the vast majority of companies. Now what this company does, this company owns over 900 acres of land in Texas, specifically in the Permian Basin in Texas, and their main business is renting out this land to oil and gas drilling companies, as well as managing the land and leasing and selling the land. And so their main source of income is from the royalties by these oil and gas companies that use their land. They have to pay Texas Pacific Land Trust a portion of their revenues. So here I'm taking a look at their latest annual report. Their business runs in two segments, land and resource management and water services. So like I said, they have 900,000 acres of land in West Texas. So they themselves do not produce oil and gas. And that's why I said this company is related to the oil and gas industry, but this company does not directly extract oil and gas. Instead, their oil and gas revenue is derived from royalties, which are paid by the companies that use their land to, to develop oil and gas. And their water services include sourcing water, water gathering and treatment, disposal and water tracking, and well testing. So... This company has two main business operations, right? The oil and gas and then the water. Now, what I like to see is that their water services have been becoming a larger and larger part of their revenues. So this is for 2019, and we can see that around 28% of their adjusted EBITDA was from the water services and operations. And the remaining 72 was from the land and resource, which again is mainly oil and gas. Now, in terms of the quality of the business, this is probably the highest quality business I've seen in the oil and gas industry. You know, if you look at oil and gas companies that are larger than 1 billion market cap, have EBITDA growth of over 10%, you know, debt to EBITDA of 1.5 reals, and this company has no debt, which is something I'm going to get to, ROIC of at least 40% and an 80% margin. Texas Pacific Land Trust is the only company that fits all of these metrics. Because of this, this is one of the highest quality companies I have seen. Now we can take a look at the Rule One Toolbox website, which I've talked about in the past, and it is one of my favorite websites for finding historical information on stocks. And what I want you to notice is just how incredible the growth rates of this company have been. You have their book value per share in dividend, their earnings per share, their operating cash, their sales, all growing at high double digit returns. And what I want you to notice is if you look at the 10 year, if you look at the 10 year numbers, they are incredible, right? 38%, 40, they're all in the high 30s or 40%. But what I want you to notice is as we shrink these growth numbers for the past three years, they're, they're all over 100%. So this is a company for who the growth is actually accelerating over the past 10 years. And when you start out with growth rates in the 30 and 40%, um, I've never seen something like this before, where you have a company that was growing so fast to begin with, and that growth has only accelerated. These growth rates are because of the moat of a business. And I always say I like to find businesses with strong moats. And what is a moat? A, mo a moat is a sustainable competitive advantage that keeps competitors out of your profits, right? And so this this business has a great moat and the moat is pretty obvious. This company owns a crap ton of land and not just land, they own high quality land in an area that is in high demand. You know, if you're a company who drills oil, you want to be in the Permian Basin in Texas. It is one of the best locations, at least in the US, for, for drilling oil. 
Yeah, so when you think about it, this company really doesn't have any competitors. The only competitors that this company has are other large landowners in Texas, which there are not many. Um, this company is the largest landowner in Texas. These And if an oil or gas company wants to drill in any of the 900 acres of land that Texas, Texas Pacific Lands owns, then they have to go to Texas Pacific Lands. So the the moat on this company is just outstanding and it, it's clear as day. Um, you know, it's it's just obvious what their moat is. And I think that's that's awesome. You know, this is probably one of the most clear examples of a moat that I've ever seen. Again, my favorite part of this company is debt, practically zero debt, 0 0.01 years earnings. This is a company with no debt and an industry like the oil and gas industry where most oil and gas companies are leveraged up to their nose. And a lot of them have risks of going bankrupt right now. This is one of the safest oil and gas companies you can that are out there for you to invest in um, just because of the fact that they have no debt. Now we can use this website's margin of safety calculator. Their growth rate is projected to be extremely high at 38%. And I like to be more conservative. I, I like to cap growth rates at 20% to be conservative. And we can assume that they will have also a future PE ratio of 20, which is also very conservative. And assuming this, the the growth rate of 20% and the future PE of 20, this this website shows that their fair value is around 1250 The stock right now is trading at only $469. So I think this company is at a tremendous discount right now. Um, this is the price chart. And as you can see in the past, the stock has traded around this eight to $900 range. So this is the lowest the stock has been in a, in a long time. And again, I would say this is probably one of the best stocks to invest in in the oil and gas industry right now. This investor presentation also has a lot of great information out there that's, that's also pretty interesting. They really get into detail on and you know, what kind of companies they lease the, their land out to. Have, uh, you know, talks about their undeveloped inventory. So I highly recommend checking out this full presentation. There's a lot of great information out here to research this company more in depth. Now, now I want to talk about a few risks that this company faces. Like any publicly traded company, there are risks out there associated with them. And I think it is important to talk about them. So the first risk that this company faces is obviously the threat of lower oil and gas prices. Um, you know, as you know, as everyone knows, oil prices have crashed. It could result, at least in the short term, in lower earnings for this company. Again, this company does not produce oil and gas, but they receive royalties from the oil and gas companies that are drilling on their land. And if oil prices fall, then Texas Pacific land will receive less in royalties. The second risk I see with this company is in the business structure itself. This company is very unique in the fact that it is not structured like most other public companies. The vast majority of public companies out there are C corporations, and this company is actually a trust. And so that means this company operates differently than most companies. This company is a, is a trust. And so instead of a CEO like most companies have, this company actually has trustees that manage the company's resources. Right now, they have two trustees, John Norris and David Berry. And they had a third trustee, but he recently passed away. And so first, a trust does not have the same legal requirements as a C corporation. So for example, this company does not hold an annual shareholders meeting like a lot of other companies out there. And so for that reason, this company is not as shareholder friendly as most other public companies, which is something I'm, I'm not a huge fan of. Secondly, the way the trustee election process works is that trustees hold office until their death, resignation, or disqualification. And this is a potential co conflict I see. You know, in most public companies, shareholders elect the board of directors, which then appoint the CEO. And so in most com in, for most companies, if the CEO ever does something completely wrong and mishandles the company completely, it's pretty easy to kick the CEO out, right? As long as you have the majority of shareholders vote to appoint board members that, that vote to fire the CEO, then it is pretty simple to do. But in a company like where it is a trust, these two trustees are generally locked into their position either until they quit or they die. And so that's a potential conflict I see. Um, these, you know, these two trustees have been with this company for a long time, so I don't foresee them 
ever mismanaging the company's resources or anything like that. But if it were to happen, then it would be it would be harder to kick them out of their position. Another thing I don't like is the the trustees of this company are not paid based on the performance of the company. They are paid a straight salary, no extra incentives based off of the share price. And so again, this is something I'm not a huge fan of. I like it when I like it when managers of company their interests are best aligned with shareholders. And so I would I would like to see the trustees of this company have more of their compensation tied to the performance of the company. Finally, the salary of the management of this company are pretty high. Um, you know, we see totals of of almost four million for the for the CEO in 2019. And so, if you compare this to other companies of this size, the 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 management at this company does get paid excessively. Again, not something I'm a huge fan of, but they have. I will admit they have been doing a great job. So. It's something that I'm, I'll accept if they manage to continue running the, the company well. Now, one last thing I want to point out. Texas Pacific Land Trust actually has recently approved a plan to reorganize into a Delaware corporation. And so there was some talk of this and they, they met with some advisors and they decided that. And so I think this is a great step for the company. You know, if they do, in fact, reorganize their company into a Delaware C corporation, then most of the risks I just talk about go away. Right, they'll have a proper CEO managing the company. They will be forced to hold shareholder meetings and, you know, do a lot of other things that that public companies that most public companies do. And so, I think this is a great step for the company. And uh, the comp, I would, I'd be much more comfortable investing in this company if they did reorganize as a Delaware corporation. So in terms of if I am investing in this stock, I have not invested in the stock yet. I think the price right now is a great price to be investing in this company, but I'd like to see it go a little lower before I invest in it. Uh, if we look more recently, the price did get down to around $300 a couple of weeks ago. Um, and so I, I sort of missed a chance there. Um, getting this th company at $300 is a steal. Um, you know, as I said, the, the fair value is estimated to be around $1,200. And so right now we're at 465. Um, you know, this is this is a perfectly good place to buy into this company if you believe in them and like their business. I would probably look to buy if this company got back down to the $300 range and if this company ever got down to a crazy level like below 250, then I would probably start buying heavily. Again, always do your own due diligence and research before buying a company. Don't invest in this company just because I made this video. There are plenty of risks with a company like this. And so it is always good to fully understand the, those risks before you put your own hard-earned money into this company. So if you like this video, if you appreciate the fact that I'm trying to bring companies to your attention that no one else is talking about, um, there's not a single video on YouTube or anywhere that is talking about this company. So if you appreciate that, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with as many people as you can. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers, which I am extremely grateful for. Thank you all. And I will see you on the next video.